First question, how much is the e-commerce industry worth right now? Does anybody know the answer? A lot. I know it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge number. A trillion. Trillions, yes. And so yes. yes. How many trillions? 2.8 trillion dollars. Wow. Just in the consumer market. So this is consumer-based e-commerce business. According to the UN Trade and Development, we actually reached $29 trillion. That includes like B2B e-commerce. So it's a gigantic number. Do you know how many zeros that is? It's like 14 zeros, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a huge number. Okay. Next question. How many users are on the internet worldwide right now? Googling. <laughs> four, four billion? Four billion maybe. Really close, yeah. 4.4 4 billion people are connected to the internet. And there are approximately 7.8 billion people on the planet right now. So that's about 60% of the world's population are already connected to the internet. So probably babies are not connected to the internet just yet. <laughs> but maybe two or three year old might be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and also, out of those people, 1.8 billion people already participate on e-commerce. So that's about 40% of the total internet population. So chances are, numbers are increasing every year. 75% uh, of the population are basically non-English speakers. So if you don't localize your website to other languages, you're basically missing out 75% of the population. So, all these figures really tell you that e-commerce is an unbelievably big global opportunity. So, Penny Ghost does an annual um, e-commerce survey every year, and we analyze the e-commerce landscape. And uh, what we found is the uh, out of 94% um, of the survey participants, we have like, tens of thousands of people participating in the survey, they participate in e-commerce. Um, and uh, out of those people, 70% actually participate in cross-border commerce, which means that they purchase something from another country. And this number is actually increasing every year, and also people who do participate in cross-border business tend to purchase even more, uh, more so, uh, more frequently every year. And some of the leading countries are like uh, China, India, and South Korea. So, uh, Pitigos is a global technology company. We enable billions of transactions, uh, both physical and digital, in a connected, borderless world of commerce. Our mission has been the same since 1920, actually. We are going to be celebrating 100th year anniversary next year, 2020. Yeah. So, it's really amazing, and uh, really, I'm uh, proud to be part of the legacy. Um, so think about 100 years, right? I haven't lived for 100 years just yet, but <laughs> think about all the changes that happened in the past 100 years. I mean, technology, political, climate, social, business, pretty much everything has changed, right? But at the most, our mission has not changed. It's been the same forever, which is to really help our clients succeed in a world of commerce. So, um, we have a lot of offering uh, from uh, Pitney Bowes, but uh, I'm only going to be talking about global e-commerce because that's my topic today. Uh, we have four distinct offerings. Uh, complete uh, cross-border is an end-to-end -end solution that enables global commerce. So, uh, we enable uh, payments in foreign currency, the local currency of the customer's choice. Uh, we handle the logistics behind the scene. We uh, offer a global checkout screen, and we provide a global customer care. And also, we have a marketplace solution. So if you uh, want to list your uh, uh, products or brands, um, we help you with that. And we provide tools to manage things like uh, uh, travel fee management, uh, storefront management, um, uh, fulfillment, uh, things like that. Also, we have our payment services uh, in uh, foreign uh, of course, the uh, foreign transactions, and also uh, uh, we provide fraud protection and uh, tax calculation services. Um, 
We have uh, uh, Vodafree.com. Uh, if you have a smartphone, pull up your smartphone and type in Vodafree.com and book market because this is going to be a really good one for you for shopping. <laughs> I'll talk about it a little bit more later, but uh, Vodafree.com is the uh, part of the marketing services uh, site uh, offering. Okay, uh, so we work with uh, many leading brands around the world. I uh, just listed uh, some of them here. Do you recognize uh, these brands? So any one of these sites, uh, basically you can shop from anywhere to everywhere. So you can shop uh, from Ireland and ship it to Germany, or you can uh, you know, uh, buy it from Japan and ship it to uh, I don't know, whatever country that you can pick up. Um, pretty much we can enable that uh, anywhere to everywhere uh, solution. Except for Target. Uh, Target will only ship into Mexico and Canada. <laughs> Um, since we're at the Irish consulates, <laughs> I thought that would be appropriate to talk about our island office. Uh, so we have three offices in, um, near Dublin, and uh, they are actually coming together at one physical location in Sandyport, uh, Dublin, uh, in about 10 days now. They're actually getting ready to head. So as of June 1, uh, they'll be in that building, right in the future. Uh, so this group actually supports e-commerce business and uh, also SMB. SMB stands for small, medium-sized business, which is really uh, they are supporting the mailing and the shipping equipment business. So that's that's our group. And uh, so I asked this team, so what's so special about this, you know, island, uh, you know, island office? And then what they said was the uh, they are really global. Actually, they said that they're very very diverse group. And then uh, I didn't I know, make them say that. Actually, they said that. <laughs> <laughs> they, well, of course, we have employees from Ireland, but uh, they have uh, people from like uh, Eastern, uh, uh, Western European countries, Asia, North America, and they are from everywhere. So it's very, very diverse group. Okay, uh, so. I'm gonna be talking about uh, five key factors in global uh, e-commerce, um, since uh, that's the only time that I have, I think. <laughs> okay, so the first one is uh, market. So, uh, e-commerce is not about just putting a website up and hoping that somebody will just show up and start buying your product, right? I mean, you know, you do need to uh, you know, market the target in the right segments and you target the right people. Um, and uh, there are two important metrics uh, in global e-commerce. So the first one is acquisition cost. So acquisition cost is a cost of acquiring a new customer. So if you add up all your marketing expenses and divide it by number of new clients, that's your acquisition cost. And you want to keep this cost as low as possible. Um, if it's too high, that means you are not very efficient. Uh, you want to be able to market to more customers in more countries with as little effort as possible. So one of the things that we uh, we provide from Disney Goals is the uh, globalfree.com that I told you about. Um, it's a great uh, discovery platform. It's an online portal. And if you list your brand or your company on the website, you're automatically ex exposed to one million potential customers. So if you are a store owner, you can start with nothing, or you can start with one million potential customers. So that's a great start, right? <laughs> so you do the right marketing, and you get your people to come to your website. It does not end there. Now you have to think about conversion rate. The conversion rate is the percentage of visitors to a e-commerce site, and you want them to perform the desired action. So in case of e-commerce, it is to buy or submit order. That's the desired action. Um, and if you have, uh, let's say, 100 people come to your website and only two people purchase something from you, that means that you have 2% conversion rate. And that seems like a small number, but um, in the e-commerce industry, 2-3% to 3 is considered average and decent, normal, actually. And if you have anything more than like 6 or like 10%, that's like really fabulous. That's like really, really good. So if your number is less than two to three percent, you should really think about you know could be a, you know some uh, reasons why are people are not buying. Uh, so it could be that you know you're asking like way too many personal questions to the customer, or 
uh, you're forcing them to register or uh, your product you know, site is not easy to navigate or not having enough information. Uh, if you're getting lots of traffic from outside of your country and your site is not localized, obviously, you know, they can't be, right? So they probably abandon that uh, screen. So it could be many reasons. Okay. So this is my favorite slide, and I can talk about this all day long, but I don't, I don't, I don't have that all day. Um, so I think uh, if you are in a globalization, globalization industry, I think you really appreciate this, but um, you really need to uh, translate and localize your website if you're targeting to a non-English speaking audience, or you know, you're from another country and you want to target the you know, right uh, language of your target customers. Um, you know, of course, like things like navigation and product descriptions, uh, metadata, um, you know, all these things. Um, but even for like the product descriptions, um, you really have to be careful because when I was shopping for, um, uh, when I was shopping at bocajewels.com, which is the uh, UK site actually, it's one of our clients, and uh, I came across this word, wellies, and you probably know because you're from Ireland, maybe? <laughs> no, you're not? Okay. Well, maybe I, Irish people are close to England, so you, you might know, but I had no idea what that was. And I asked my uh, US colleagues, and they had no idea what they were. And the other one was the uh, uh, G-I-L-E-T, uh, and I kept saying, get it. <laughs> and the UK colleague corrected me that it's pronounced as get it, and it means best. And I have no idea. So <laughs> if you're not customizing your terminology, even you know, even if you're speaking the same English, if you're not customizing the right terminology, you're not gonna get the right kind of response uh, from our audience. So uh, you know, certainly terminology is very important, and localization is definitely part of that. Uh, sizing, uh, it's already challenging enough to buy a pair of shoes, right, or a piece of clothing uh, from your domestic site. If you're not explaining about the sizing chart and then all the fit, it's almost impossible to buy it. So the UK is the US size 4 is I think the UK size 6, but I think it's more like 8 in my opinion because um, UK in sizing is tend to be a lot tighter than the US one. <laughs> And then uh, that's like Japanese at nine, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if you are like, you know, somebody like me who's really into purse, purses, <laughs> handbags, I need to know the exact dimensions. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know I need to know, you know, uh, centimeters or inches or whatever. Um, and uh, I need to know how many pockets are inside and which ones are zipped and you know, how long is the strap is and. I need to know all that information. So um, lots and lots of information is necessary. Um, and then you know, displaying it uh, with the right uh, information for your target audience. So um, so once you provide all that information, probably the checkout screen is the most important one of all. Because you're asking your customers to enter name, address, phone number, email, credit card information, all that, right? So unless they feel really comfortable with your site, they're not gonna proceed with the information. They're not gonna hit that buy or submit or the button, right? Um, so it has to be that much. And then, uh, luckily, or hopefully, a uh, customer actually hit that button, uh, that doesn't end the uh, shopping experience. You really have to think about the overall end-to-end client -end experience. So that's your, um, once the, the customer submit order, um, do you, uh, do you send out the email uh, in their, uh, the confirmation email in their native language? Can the customer call up the customer service and ask them about the order, status of order, and talk to them in their native language? You know, can they post a review in their language? Can they read the review in their native language? Um, and uh, you know, things like promotion and reward program is really important. I mean, I collect points all the time. I am collecting points, uh, by the way, on the uh, open table. <laughs> I got the free meals before. <laughs> I love collecting points. I, love <laughs> I collect, collect miles of them. But anyway, um, so it's really important for me to be able to use the uh, promo code and uh, use, uh, you know, collect points. And uh, really annoys me when I find uh, like really good deals and then you got this great promo code on the main site and then try to use it on the localized site and then now it tells me that the promo code is invalid. Uh, you know, this is like so disappointing experience. 
So, uh, you don't want to be uh, disappointing a customer. Um, if you are targeting only for the in particular countries, then you should just say so in upfront so that you know, you're not going to waste your time. Um, and also, uh, in a cross border uh, e commerce, I think it's even more so returns and exchanges are even more important than domestic. I mean, it's important in domestic commerce too, but cross border even more so because uh, chances are they don't have that local store. They're not going to be able to go to China, right? And it's a million miles away. So unless they know that the, you know, they can get the, uh, uh, you know, they can return it or exchange for another uh, item, uh, people won't proceed. So it's the most of the people. Okay. All right, compliance. So how many of you are import export uh, uh, laws and uh, regulation experts in this room? Okay. How about duties and taxes? Like, do you know um, what items are subjected to duties and tax at what percentage? Because you know if you uh, if you don't do these things right, you're gonna get yourself trouble with the government, and that's not what you want. And also. <laughs> Uh, chances are, uh, customers are going to end up receiving a product and then they owe taxes, duties and taxes. And then that's like really, really a frustrating experience. What country uh, exports the most perfume and commons in the world? France. That's what I thought. United States. Ireland. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought that was France too. But no wonder everybody smells good in <laughs> Yes. 
<laughs> Fast delivery? Of course. Right? <laughs> so global uh, logistic companies are the, um, really the one that basically takes the you know, seller's item and then deliver it all the way to the um, customer site and doorstep in a whole other country. So they are really doing the heavy lifting for us. And without them, global e-commerce does not exist. So they play a really key role in this. Um, but the, at the same time, high shipping costs is the one of the biggest reasons why cross-border shoppers abandon their uh, purchase, actually. So really, uh, I think this is a more, one of the most challenging area, actually. Um, I think as a consumer, we are really getting spoiled, right? So like uh, Amazon setting like really high standards, really. Like if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get free day free shipping, and they're spending like eight hundred million dollars to basically go to a one day free shipping, right? And then uh, Walmart has two day free shipping, and most of the margins that free shipping are going to spend like fifty dollars or something like that. So. Free shipping is really becoming like a norm uh, in domestic e-commerce. So once you get used to that, now like you know you started to expect uh, you know something more similar from um, cross-border uh, business, even though it's global, and you know that it's coming from all the way from a whole other country. But at the same time, you still want that. It's just the human nature. We just want more and more. Um, so from a retail standpoint, it's really important to partner with uh, companies that can uh, provide a, a multi-carrier strategy, uh, not just like a single sourcing um, uh, company, because if you are just a new company or just starting out or if you don't have the volume, chances are you're paying a lot, a lot of money for shipping. Um, and then uh, well, this is company won't give you the break unless you promise a huge number of volume. So, uh, if you just have a one relationship with the one carrier, then uh, you're probably paying way too much money. And, uh, um, yeah. and then you have to shift the cost to the customer, and then they don't want to pay, and then it's a bad cycle. 